we can all do that. We can find ways to connect our humanity and to share these experiences and then turn them into really powerful opportunities so that we've felt so isolated for so long. And this is a way to feel connection. There are opportunities for our work and careers everywhere, if you know where to look. That's easier said than done, especially in our fast-paced and constantly changing world. Marianne Fairmouth is talking to experts, employers, and job seekers to bring you insight and understanding about what's possible. This is Career Can Do, where we're navigating the new work world. Welcome to the Career Can Do podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping you navigate the new work world. My name is Marianne Fairmouth. I'm an author, speaker, corporate trainer, and career coach. And today I am just delighted to have a guest on my show that I have so much respect and admiration for. Rita Miller is an author, speaker, trainer, and playwright. She was also the president of the National Speakers Association in Michigan. She's used her professional experience serving clients in many industries, including healthcare, academic institutions, and nonprofit communities. Apart from her education, and by the way, Brita is from Michigan. She went to the University of Detroit Mercy. I went to the University of Detroit Mary Grove. So I have a sweet spot for her in my heart. She came to her awareness of the value of self-care when she cared for her mother nearly for six years, including hospice and in her home. She's done so many wonderful things. And I wanted to have her on the show today because she's a true testament of how we can take the many changes that happen to us in our lives and transform them into meaningful experiences that help others. So without further ado, help me welcome Brita Miller. Brita, say hello to everybody. Well, hello there. I'm delighted to be here with you, Marianne. Well, it's my pleasure. Tell us a little bit. I know you're so accomplished and you've done so many great things, but tell us how you've recently, with this very huge success, of this play that you've done. It's a one woman play. And I have to mention, it's at the very prestigious campus of the University of Michigan, Arthur Miller Theater. Tell us how this all happened and how you used what's happened to you to to do this interesting, interesting new career journey. It is certainly an amazing journey. And I will say that it's been a positive outcome of COVID. Several years ago, I well, I went to a coach and I wanted to find out about making a transition in my work life. And I learned about being a professional speaker that, gosh, this was about 10 years ago. And the idea, what would I have to talk about? What would I have the authority or the credibility? What would people want to hear? And I learned that really the lessons that I learned from caring for my mom, apart from my professional work experience in event planning and all kinds of other fundraising events for organizations. But it was my caregiving experience that I learned some really profound life lessons and that I had the ability to translate them into stories that were that had impact and that were funny and that could connect people in a way to talk about icky things in a funny way that could really help folks. So I did that for many years and wrote a book and was on the Moth Story Hour and learned to really become a professional storyteller. But last year during COVID, when I was just in the thick of it and I was feeling kind of down because there were no speaking events, my whole professional speaking world had dried up and turned upside down. I I did a lot of things on Zoom, but it wasn't the same. And I asked myself the big question. And that was, okay, Brita, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? And I thought, well, that's easy. (laughs) I would follow my heart and my dream way back a million years ago, I won a theater scholarship, an acting scholarship to Michigan State University. And I really thought about that as a career path, but I decided it wasn't right for me. I knew the price that I would have to pay to become a professional actor. And honestly, I didn't want to do it. I had other dreams and other ideas that were more important. So I put that on the back burner. But then I came across a a director, a, a storytelling coach, and he said to me, you should think about doing a one-woman show. And 
that was two years ago. Put it in the back of my head. It frightened me. It's an amazing thing to think about writing a show and then performing it. And a one-person show is pretty much a high-wire act without a net. It's pretty scary stuff. Anyway, I set my heart to it. I set my mind to it. And I spent about four months compiling all the stories that I had put together and shaping this. And what ended up happening is probably the best thing I've ever done. It's called Mrs. Kelly's Journey Home. And as a career and a career move, I've transitioned from focusing on doing keynotes and doing uh, presentations to healthcare organizations and nonprofit organizations. And now I'm focusing on presenting this play, Mrs. Kelly's Journey Home, which is funny, it's full of heart, and it really is an opportunity to teach people about being in a really difficult situation, which is being in the sandwich generation, caregiving for an elderly person with dementia, and at the same time, raising three young teenagers (laughs) in my house and not losing my mind. And how did I do that? And what were things that I learned and what were stories that I could share that are not just entertaining, but that really help people learn a new way to think about this stage in life, about end of life care, about hospice, all kinds of things. That So what it has ended up being, it's uplifting, it's funny. And then the model that I'm using, I'd love to share with you that it is different because my goal is not to do this as a regional theatrical performance, but this is, this is a really big move to reach people in communities all across the country and even in, uh, in other countries as well. That's wonderful. Well, I know uh, in the Blue Room, we talked about one of the uh, experiences you had in January, which was in London. And I believe you spoke at the uh, PSA, which is the London National Speakers Association. Is that correct? Yes. They're affiliated in that they are brother or sister organizations. So the Professional Speakers Association of the UK and Ireland is a collegial, a professional organization of speakers. And they invited me to present. The topic was thinking differently, thinking differently about our work and our careers. And what I did was I thought differently about my work as a speaker and my ability to tell stories. And I took this material, same material I've been talking about for 10 years, and turned it into a one-woman show, a performance. And it's been an amazing journey. It's only just beginning. I had the world premiere at the Arthur Miller Theater at the University of Michigan. And now I have quite a few bookings that are happening this spring and summer. And so instead of being, I don't use an agent. I'm not looking at being booked as a a traditional theatrical performance. My vision, my idea for this, and this is drawing on my experience of 20 years as an event planner and doing pretty high-end fundraising events for nonprofits, galas are a very expensive thing to do. They're expensive to create and produce, and I've done many of them. And you're often providing the same experience for donors who have been to many things. The same is true for golf outings and other traditional fundraising events. And they're good. They're, they do a good job. They raise money. But organizations are always looking for something new and fresh, something to really engage their donors. So I am positioning my play, Mrs. Kelly's Journey Home, using my experience and my skills as an event planner and as a fundraiser and offering it to organizations, nonprofit organizations, whether they are for seniors, for healthcare, for a variety of diseases and illnesses that need to raise money more than ever. And I'm saying, you know what, let's do this as a special event. So the the format, the model that I've created is in the evening, I will come into town, we will have a gala of sorts. There will be VIP elements, they'll sell tickets, they will book the theater. I come in, I do the show. We do a post- event VIP meet and greet with dessert and coffee or whatever. (laughs) And that's a great thing. But here's the best part. The next day, we do a matinee performance in the very same theater. But this time, the audience is filled with the people who are the beneficiaries of the nonprofit organization. So maybe this is where the families of the caregivers 
the healthcare workers, the nurses, the aides, the people who work in senior living organizations who need to take a break, who need to have an opportunity to have a laugh, but at the same time acknowledge and appreciate the work they do. They get to see the same show, but they may not have the means to pay the higher ticket price the night before at the fundraising event. This humanitarian aspect of the way we interact, the way we do our jobs, the way we help others is really what we're talking about here. And I think in the work world, the more we can you know, work with networking and others and doing things to help people, no matter what their situations, you know, if they're the president of the company or they're the, the maid that helps the president of the company, we're trying to have a different mindset that's more humanitarian now in and out of the workplace to help others. And I think COVID did that for us. Wouldn't you agree with that, Brita? Absolutely. And I think what's powerful about this story is it's very personal. It's my personal story, yet it's universal. Mm-hmm. And that so many people relate to the more specific, the more personal the story is, the more people have come up and said to me, I know exactly what you're talking about. I felt that way. Or my favorite is, you say the thing out loud that I've been thinking. And mm-hmm. I don't think it gets any better than that, that it really touches people. And we can all do that. We can find ways to connect our humanity and to share these experiences and then turn them into really powerful opportunities so that we've felt so isolated for so long. And this is a way to feel connection. No, I agree. I agree. And the one thing we talked about earlier in the podcast, I think that's very profound, is that You went through, like all of us, a time during COVID when things were so changed. Uh, There weren't, as a professional speaker, there weren't as many speaking events to speak at and different things. So you sat down and you said to yourself, what would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? And for our listeners out there, say they're in between jobs right now. They've lost a job. They're having a hard time finding another one. Okay, so they ask themselves that question. And that's a wonderful question to ask. But at the same time, Rita, when you answered that question, did you also think about a safety net if you did fail? I did. And I guess where I'm coming from, though, is that so many times we need to have courage to try things that are different. And in this instance, it was, okay, if I wasn't afraid, if I didn't have fear, what would I do? And so I thought, okay, well, if I wasn't afraid of failing, I would do this. And so I tried to Imagine myself already successful. And with that mindset, I focused. I focused like a laser and I did my research. I watched mountains of videos of other one woman, one man shows. I looked to see how other people are doing this. I did a lot of research to say, what would it look like for me and what would it take to be successful? And so it was about me defining what that success looked like. My goal is not to take this show to Broadway. However, if they invited me, I'd be not <laughs> But that's I would buy the first ticket. <laughs> but that's not my definition of success. And I think that's another important thing. It's no one else's definition or bar of success. It is my definition. And one of the ways that financially I'm making it viable as business is as I get more performances under my belt, I'm going to have national sponsors, presenting sponsors corporations who want to be aligned with this show and that will allow me to have the resources to take it to smaller communities who might not have the budget to bring in a professional production. But they deserve one. They deserve a great show. They deserve a great performance. They deserve a top-notch experience. And that's what I want to do. And that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm speaking to folks all over the country, and it's really exciting. Well, I think you're a true testament to our listeners out there in the new work world of what you can do if you have determination. Stephen Covey, that we are not a product of our circumstances. We are a product of our decisions. And I think when we decide what we want to do and we we have a game plan how to do it, we have goals, we have a strategy, and we have strong determination. I think all of our listeners out there can gain some good knowledge from this podcast because there's no limitation on what you can achieve if you really put your mind to it. And I think my sweet father, Brita, used to always say, you know, my dad had an eighth grade education. 
I mean, he was brilliant. He's probably the smartest man I ever knew. And he always said, and I've said this before, you know, Marianne, if you tell yourself you can't do it, you're not going to do it. But if you can tell yourself you can, you will. I think Henry Ford said the same thing. But anyway, my dad said, it's all in your head. And I think what we talk about that now, it's called mindset. So I think when we have the right mindset, we are determined to achieve something. And I think the more important thing here, too, in my opinion, is that it's not just about profit. It's not just about huge success. It's about doing what we do. We have to make a living, of course. But what are we doing at the end of the day to help somebody else? And I think if we keep that mindset, how can the world not become a better place? Do you agree, Rita? Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. And, and the other thing, too, and I struggle with this because I'm so excited and I'm so eager to reap the rewards of this hard work. But what I'm really engaging in right now is enjoying the process and knowing that I'm putting the work in. I spent about four hours this morning refining some things and just tweaking things and making it the very best that it can be. And I'm enjoying the process because it will all happen as I have faith that it will all happen as it is meant to, as long as I put in the work. I put in the work, I do the research, I reach out, I ask really smart people their thoughts, their advice, and then I'm smart enough to listen to them (laughs) and then to follow through. And that's what I'm doing. And every day it's happening right before my eyes and it's absolutely amazing. Well, I think this has been a wonderful podcast and I'm thrilled that you took the time to come on my show. You know, I think the world of you, I have the utmost respect for you. I love what you're doing. I'm one of your biggest fans. I will be uh, in Ann Arbor, hopefully this summer to see this play. But you had to tell our listeners out there, our listeners are mainly job seekers, employers, recruiters. If you had to give them two tips, and I know the big significant one is if you couldn't fail, what would you do? But if you had a couple other tips that you would give someone who's kind of in transition, they've lost a job, they're in a job they're not sure is right for them. What are a couple good, strong tips you'd give them, Rita, to give them hope to move forward? Well, I guess my thought is this. You have a variety of skills and think about those skills that you have, ones that spark you, that you think, oh, I love doing this part of my job. I love doing this. What is a position? What is a career that could allow you to do more of that? The thing you're, maybe you're good at writing. Maybe you're good at organizing. Maybe you are good at creating. Think about what is the thing, what is the activity that you love and seek out positions or roles that allow you to do more of that. There's always going to be parts of jobs that nobody likes. I mean, there's always the drudge, but you have to do that. That's why they call it work. But more of the passion is one thing. But secondly, that if you have a transferable skill, which think of how many skills you have And how do they transfer to other industries? But try to look at an industry that excites you, that you are interested in, that you have passion about. So whether that is healthcare or manufacturing or a service industry, whatever it might be, it is amazing how many behind the scenes jobs that people don't realize exist. So think about that, put the word out, transferable skills, finding a position that allows you to do more of what lights you up and then think of industries that you want to be affiliated with. And if you can put those three things together, you're going to have a leg up on the vast majority of other job seekers. And I think you'll be successful and you will feel that you're making a difference. Well, great. Well, Brita, if you ever want to be a career coach, I have a job over here for you too. (laughs) So you get such great experience, such great information that you're giving to our listeners out there. But I'm just thrilled. I've been talking to Brita Miller on Career Can Do today. Brita is a phenomenal woman. She says in her in her website, a woman of indomitable spirit. If people want to get a hold of you, Brita, how would they do that? Pretty easy. My website. <laughs> it is BritaMiller.com, B-R-E-E-D-A, Miller.com. And there is a link there for the show, but also my contact information is all over the place with my email. And I'd be happy to have a chat with anybody who would like to. All right. And if you all are driving in the car right now and you haven't had a chance to write that down, you can always go to fairmouth.com. I'll have all the information on my website as well. Again, my name is Marianne Fairmouth. This is the Career Can Do podcast, and we will see you all next time.
We thank you for tuning in to our Career Can Do podcast. We make no guarantees on results for your particular quest, but we hope you enjoy the information presented. Thank you.